watching this, please comment. Let me know if you can hear the music. Testing out a new software here. Listen to the sound of the drum calling players to the game of the new world order. Don't be cause unaware when the heads start rolling. Though it couldn't happen here, I know it wouldn't happen here. favorite music videos. Listen to the sound of applause in a chamber full of men selling out their people as they plan their assault on the heart of Thanks for commenting, Brent. I appreciate that. No, it couldn't happen here. I know it wouldn't happen here. My name is spelled E-V-A-N, though. Thank you, Brent. Everybody's enjoying their lunch break today. In the Council of the Government, we must guard against acquisition of unwarranted influence by the military industrial complex. All right, that's a video by Jordan Page. Um, one of my favorite music artists and I am testing on a new software to see how it works I wanted to make a video um, we've got a new article that John Birch Society does it's actually not new but we made it into reprint and it's titled when will we hold them to their oath let me show it to you real quick let's see Okay, hope you can see that. And in this article, uh, Jack McManus, um, he writes here at the very start, uh, just, just what they all swear to. Um, he says, do you swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear truth and allegiance to the same? That you will take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter. So help you God. Now that's the oath that our representatives in Congress take when they become congressmen. And each member of Congress is supposed to obey their oath to the U.S. Constitution. They swear an oath to it, right? Okay, so I'm going to show you a page here off my Facebook. Congressman Thomas Massey posted yesterday, With Americans struggling to pay their energy bills, the House voted last night to subsidize energy projects for Europeans so Europe can be more independent of Russia. Cost U.S. taxpayers $416 million for 2020 to 2024. He's got links on here you can go to to see what the roll call vote is. I'm going to show you that real quick. So during this time where people, you know, a lot of Americans just don't have any money. Um, only 24 voted against this. Now, there are 16 that did not vote. But I can see, I think, two congressmen. It looks like Rice from South Carolina. It looks like Duncan from South Carolina both voted against this, so good for them. But my congressman, William Timmons, voted yes. He voted yes to spend, to send $416 million 
um, to to subsidize energy projects for Europeans, so Europe can be more independent of Russia. Can you imagine that? You know, going to Congress, you're a freshman in Congress. Your only duty is to obey your oath to the U.S. Constitution. And Congressman William Timmons, the congressman to replace Trey Gowdy, votes right away to send $416 million of U.S. taxpayer money to Europe. There, There is no um, – in, in, in the U.S. Constitution, he has he – has, He's already broken his oath right there. Now, I'm going to point you someplace else here because I posted this back in January. He broke his oath early on. I mean, he voted um, to bar President Trump from exiting NATO. That was also another unconstitutional vote on his part right when he began in office. So he, he really – he took this oath, and I'm going to read this again. You can find it right here. If you go – if you Google this, the New American – the title is when, we, when Will We Hold Them to Their Oath? Here it is. Do you swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic? And the congressmen, they hold their hand up like this. They got their other hand on the Bible. Now, not all of them. I think there's, there's, there's a handful of them that don't put their hand on the Bible. But anyway, so here we go again. Do you swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you will take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter, so help you God. That is the oath that all of our congressmen take. Yet, Congressman William Timmons he covers Greenville County and South Spartanburg County in South Carolina. He voted yesterday, it looks like, or maybe the day before yesterday, to send $416 million to Europe to subsidize their energy costs. Where I know people in Spartanburg County, the same district area that William Timmons lives in, that are struggling to pay their bills, why would we send them? In Europe, $416 million when taxpayers in America are hurting right now to pay for their own energy bills. Anyways, that's something that those of us all over America should understand, especially if your congressman was one of those that voted for sending $416 million to Europe. And I'm so glad that Congressman Thomas Massey, you know, posted about this. I'm going to, I'm going to bring us back to this real quick because there, there's a comment on here by a coworker of mine. Let me pull it up here. Okay, it's right here, and it's 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 the first comment that pops up. It has 19 likes. Christian Gomez says, by trying to win over Europe with America's brand of socialism, we will not wean Europe off. Of Russian socialism. Rather, we will reinforce Europe's dependency on socialism. Bad move. Thank you, Congressman Thomas Massey, for the update and keeping Congress transparent of its unconstitutional actions. Yes, and thank you, Congressman Thomas Massey, for for posting that. And and I'm 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 furious because I know. Right now, how many you know people that I know are struggling? I'm I'm around you know I, I, a lot of people, and it's although the economy is good, we've been taxed more, food prices are higher, insurances are going up, a gas uh, even this week is going up, and so we. Uh, the Americans of this country need to stand up and we need to expose what's taking place. And I'm trying to pull up a page right here, so bear with me just a, a minute. All right. This is William Timmons' house.gov website. 
And if you are as upset as me about this, please call one of these numbers, the Washington, D.C. numbers down here. It's 202-225-6030. The Greenville number is 864-241-0175. And the Spartanburg number is 864-583-3264. Now, this is if you're living in William Timms's congressional district, the one he just – you know, he spent over a million dollars of his of his money to uh, win the election, and now he's already going to Congress, and he's giving away millions of our of our money, you know, the the money we need to to feed our families, to pay for our own energy costs. He just voted to send that overseas, where it'll likely be spent in a. Uh, <laughs> I mean, socialist governments do not spend money well, and usually when they get money from us, the elite get the money, and it rarely trickles down to the citizens of these poor socialist countries. And so this is just a bunch of baloney, that this is one of the first things William Timmons votes for. He can't even obey the Constitution for a few months. Right away, freshman, he's the same age as me, 35 years old, goes to Congress, goes to Washington, D.C., and votes against the U.S. Constitution. And his excuse will likely be, well, you know, most congressmen that I'm surrounded by voted for it, so it seemed like it was okay. He, he, he will not say that his vote he, – he will probably give in and go, oh, yeah, this is – yeah, you're right. It's against the Constitution, but since everybody else is doing I can do it too. Please comment if you have something to say about this because – um, I want to hear from you. This is um, I've got a short time period over my lunch hour to talk about this, and I want to get as many people to share this, especially if you live in Greenville and Spartanburg, because we need to wake people up to the fact that William Timmons just voted to send $416 million to Europe to subsidize their energy costs when Americans in the United States of America are hurting and we pay our taxes and we deserve to not have to have congressmen disobey the, the U.S. Constitution and send that money overseas. Terrible what happened. Here's the bill right here. So if you need to share the bill with somebody, it's H.R. 1616. So Congressman Thomas Massey put that on his Facebook page. So that's for all of us to read. I, I, I mean, you know, congressmen, they, they don't usually read these bills. This one's super long. But all you got to do in these bills is find one part of it that's unconstitutional. If you're a congressman, your duty is to... Vote against it. If it's unconstitutional, don't break your oath. We are sending you to Congress for one reason, and that is to obey the U.S. Constitution and to do the best job you can as a congressman. If you break that U.S. Constitution once, if you break your oath to office, you're done. You, you've, 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 you've now gone against your oath, and I, I'm, I'm going to have a hard time trusting you from this point forward if you do that. There's so much at stake here. Uh, the USMCA is likely going to come up for a vote in the coming weeks. Right now in South Carolina where I live, there's people that want to call Constitution Convention. I mean, this is, you know, the, these times, I, I know a lot of people are not awake to what's going on. And they don't want to, um, you know, they, they, they've got their own stuff going on. So do I. I would rather just... You know, I care about the upcoming basketball game on Friday. You know, watch Duke play. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of Zion. I like watching him play. So I like to, you know, just commit myself to caring about basketball and, 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 and things that are a lot of fun. But freedom is at stake in America. And we got to do our best as Americans to commit ourselves to giving at least a few minutes every week to doing something patriotic. It is so easy to do this. You can join the John Birch Society. I'm a field coordinator for the John Birch Society. 
Uh, we read these magazines. See these magazines over here, the New American Magazine? If you read these magazines, you're going to be one of the most interesting people in your community because you're going to have a lot to talk about. And if you hand these out to people, if you talk about them, you're going to be the number one educator in the community. Um, I'm educating college professors on this. I'm, I'm educating people twice my age on politics. Why? Because I chose to study the New American Magazine. I chose to read the books from the John Birch Society. It is very interesting to understand these things and to be able to talk to them. Um, we know, we, I don't care, you know, where you stand as far as religion goes, but those that believe in God, you, you have a duty to protect your country. You have a duty to go out and about and, and, and talk to people about things that you're concerned about. Right now, um, one of, one of our biggest concerns in America, if you're, um, aware there there could be a call for a constitutional convention in the coming months or coming years 28 states have actually called for this convention and um, now there's there's different ways that they're doing it but if this convention is called a lot could go I'm going to show this video here for everybody to watch because this is brand new from the John Birch Society short f five minute and 36 second video so bear with me just a second here so I can get it switched here for y'all to watch an article 5 convention can it be limited this process for altering the Constitution has been debated for years article 5 states that when two-thirds of state legislatures submit their applications to Congress Congress shall call a convention. Promoters of a convention claim it would be limited to the specific state application for a convention. Promoters of a convention think it would work like this. Congress receives the same application from 34 states. Delegates from the 34 states would have their commissions or instructions from their state legislatures. Following their commissions, they would only debate and vote on the amendment or amendments mentioned in their applications. This sounds straightforward enough. However, there are many problems with this theory. For instance, where would the other 16 states fit into this process? Since those states did not submit an application, they would likely not impose the same limits on their delegates as the 34 states would. Convention promoters also claim the ratification fail-safe safety net would prevent any bad amendments from being approved. Ratification of any amendment needs the approval of both houses in 38 states. Promoters believe with this process there is no way a convention could exceed these boundaries and become a runaway convention. However, that is exactly what happened in 1787. Back then, the convention was also called as a limited convention to make changes to the Articles of Confederation. The convention began with commissions from nine of the 13 states binding their delegates to the ratification process outlined in the Articles of Confederation. Months passed while many drafts and revisions were debated and voted on. What was intended to be just changes became much more. Per the Articles of Confederation, the ratification process required unanimous approval by all 13 state legislatures and Congress. This meant that just one state could block a revised constitution. However, with their new constitution, the convention changed the ratification process so that it would take five states to block the ratification. As history from 1787 has proven, even though there were strict limits on their power, those limits were ignored by the delegates. The convention transformed itself into a convention of unlimited power, otherwise known as a runaway convention. Madison conceded in Federalist 40, in one particular, it is admitted that the convention have departed from the tenor of their commission. Instead of reporting a plan requiring the confirmation of the legislatures of all the states, they have reported a plan which is to be confirmed by the people and may be carried into effect by nine states only. Many would think the commission should have been sufficient to force them to uphold the original ratification process. 
but they weren't. Yet just because the original ratification process was not upheld does not mean the Constitution was illegally adopted. In Federalist 40, Madison suggests they acted upon the transcendent and precious right of the people to abolish or alter their governments as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. The Declaration of Independence declares this power of the people is a higher authority than the power of the states, Congress, or the Constitution itself. It was this power of the people which created the states, then through the states created the Congress and the Constitution. So, by appealing to the higher power of the sovereign people, the Constitution was legally adopted. This is a perfect example of how a modern-day constitutional convention could use this higher power to change the ratification procedure even further. So thinking back to the promoter's fail-safe ratification procedure, is it really safe? Let's take a lesson from history. At the time, the problem at hand was the Articles of Confederation and its many flaws. That is why the convention was called. When looking at our present Constitution, is the actual Constitution flawed, or is it just not being followed? Calling a convention will not fix the problems we are witnessing today. The real answer is constitutional enforcement. When the people understand the Constitution and demand adherence to it, politicians will either follow the Constitution or be removed from office. The natural effect of enforcing the Constitution will be less government, more individual responsibility, and with God's help, a better world. All right, well, if, if you watch that video, you understand what's at stake here, and that we should be worried as Americans about those that are pushing to call a constitutional convention. Now a lot of them call it something else, they call it the Convention of States. But if you follow this, it was called the Conference of States back in the 90s, and, and as a big new Brzezinski in the 1970s wrote in his book that he wrote back then that it would be called the National Convention, but it's still it's still an Article 5 constitutional convention. And uh, anyways, I am very pleased because already in just I'm, I'm testing out a new software. It's called Ecamm Live, and so I, I just that's why I'm doing Facebook Live today. And, and I'm I've got a little break before I go out on the road. I'm a field coordinator for the John Birch Society, um, so I, I I meet people face to face uh, throughout the week and talk to them about what's at stake in America and what we need to do to restore our constitutional republic. Um, but anyway, so David Lee Gunther just uh, um, you should be able to see that on your screen here. He just posted a comment said. Just sent an email to Congressman Jody Heiss, so that's good. Now, David, just so you know, um, emails don't really wake them up usually. You, you got to call the office, and then what I would do if I were you, David, is I would call the Washington D.C. office. I would ask for the scheduler and see if you can meet with Congressman Jody Heiss when she is back in your area. Um, she should give you 20 to 30 minutes to talk about this when she's in her office next. And, and what they do is, you know, they, they, they have usually more than one office. And, and when, um, you know, the person's close, the congressman's close to you, maybe, you know, you'll get a chance that's convenient for you to meet and, and talk about uh, these issues. Um, there's so many issues, and, and, and the only way you can, um, you know, very, you know, do, go about this and be, um, not confused because it's so easy to be confused on what we need to do as Americans, and and we we've got to do a better job being um you know, on top of our game. We've we've got to do a much better job being on top of our game and and understanding how these congressmen are trying to fool us. Because I'm quite certain a lot of people would have just overlooked what Congressman William Timmons did a couple days ago when he voted for this bill to send all this, you know, millions of dollars to Europe to help them pay for their in energy costs. I'm sure, I'm quite sure it had been overlooked by by so many had Congressman Thomas Massey not alerted us to the fact of what, what happened uh, during a vote there in um, Congress. 
Anyways, I'm going to take off, and, and I hope you all have a great day. God bless you for taking the time to listen to this. Please like and share this video. I plan on doing a lot more of these, especially if, if it looks like this software is working very well because um, you know I'm, I'm pretty much on the road all the time, but I've, I've got short breaks here and there to talk, and I, I, I want to be able to communicate to more people online. This video will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. If you want to watch that video that we just watched uh, that Robert Brown was featured in where he talked about uh, an Article 5 convention, can it be limited? You just got to go to the John Birch Society YouTube page. It's, it's, I think it's still the newest YouTube video on the YouTube page. It may be the second newest. But just go to the John Birch Society YouTube page and you can see that. Um, thanks for watching this. I'm going to finish this off with some Jordan Page music. There's a new song that he um, did a music video to. It's called The Persecution of Schaefer Fox. And um, anyways, I'm going to finish with that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you.